this lesson is on factoring. And so what I wrote here was factoring is like the distributive property in reverse. What you're going to do is divide out the biggest common factor. So let me show you what I mean. So remember the distributive property. Let's make a quick example here. Distributed properties when you have a number outside parentheses and inside you have two or more things being added or subtracted together. Remember a number next to parentheses means multiply. So the way you use the distributed property is you just distribute it inside the parentheses by multiplying. So you just multiply six times x and get six x and you multiply six times four and get 24 and I just bring down the minus sign. And so this and this are equivalent to each other. So instead of multiplying something in, we're going to divide something out. And so what you're going to look for is the greatest common factor of the two, or it could be more than two elements in here, and you're going to divide that out. So here we go. Here's the first one. So what's the greatest common factor of 6 and 24? Well, that would be 6. So what I'm going to do is divide a 6 out. Let me write, I guess I could write this in a different way. So I'll divide both of these by 6, because that's the greatest common factor. And then I take this 6, and I write it outside the parentheses. And then inside the parentheses, I just get, I just put what I get when I divide these. So 6x divided by 6 is 1x, or just x bring down the minus sign, and 24 divided by 6 is 4. So this is the factored version of what we originally started with. And yes, this is the exact same example that I used up here. So again, the distributed property, you're multiplying something in. With factoring, you're dividing something out. So on the second example here, the greatest common factor of 28 and 12 would be 4. So I can divide each of those by 4. So I'm going to divide that by 4 and that by 4. Bring my 4 out to the front. Negative 28x divided by 4 is negative 7x. And 12 divided by 4 is 3. And that's your factored answer. If you wanted to check it, you could multiply the 4 back in, and you should end up right back where you started. So basically, do the distributive property on your answer, and it should take you right back to where you began. 16 and 12, the greatest common factor, again, is 4. So I'm going to divide each of these by 4. Bring the 4 down here. 16y divided by 4 is 4y. Bring down the minus sign, 12 divided by 4 is 3. And that's your answer. Now, if what you have inside the parentheses has a common factor, then that means you didn't get the greatest common factor in the beginning. And so I'll show you real quick what I mean by that. Let's say um, we had 12x plus um, 16. And I thought that the greatest common factor was 2. So I divide both of these by 2, bring the 2 out front, I'd have 6x plus 8. Well, 6 and 8 have a common factor still of 2, so that means it was a bigger number I could have divided by in the beginning. So check and make sure that there's not a common factor when you get done. So if I could have originally divided this by 4. All right that. And then the last example here, I just want to show you that it could be more than two terms. This one's got three terms and it's got three variables, but that's okay. We're just going to look for a common factor, the greatest common factor between 16, 12, and 2. And that value would be 2. So I'm just going to divide each of these by 2. So however many elements there are, you divide all of those elements by the same number. Divide them by 2, bring my 2 down, 16x divided by 2 is 8x, bring down the plus sign, 12v divided by 2 is 6v, bring down
down the minus sign and 2y divided by 2 is 1y or just y. And that's it. So I hope that was helpful to you. If so, give it a like and a subscribe. And please feel free to leave me a comment if you've got any. Until next time.